Hi, this is Cherie with Soliloquies, and I'm going to talk about the elusive quarter inch seam. Now, this seam is a perfect goal. Everyone tries to get a perfect quarter inch seam. It might be a pipe dream, but a little prep can go towards making for more precise piecing. And I'm going to share how I do that. So there's three steps that I use to try to get a semi-perfect quarter inch seam. And that is measure, place, and tape. And I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and show how that's done. Okay, so this is my sewing machine. I do not have high-end sewing machines. Most of the equipment that I use are simple, low-end, inexpensive, and I'm still able to produce quality work with that. Um, everybody's machine is different. The settings for everyone's machine is different. So on my machine, there is a setting for the length and the width right here. And I can move those back and forth. And I'm using a straight stitch, so on my machine there's um, different types of stitches, and I'm just using a straight stitch. But what I see happening over here is that every time I change my stitch length and my stitch width, the needle actually moves. So by paying attention to the needle, you can see, oh look, it's moving around. And that is going to significantly change my quarter inch seam. So what I do is I'm going to measure, place, and tape. Alright, so first I'm going to measure. So set the sewing machine to the desired stitch, the width, and the length, and use that setting for the life of the quilt or the project that you're working on. Because that sewing machine needle moves back and forth depending on the length and the width of the stitch, set it, make yourself a note card with those settings, and then reset it to the exact same settings every time you go to work on that project. Alright, so I have just a regular piece of printer paper. Mine just happens to be blue. I also have um, white here, so whatever you have available, just a plain sheet of paper. And I'm going to use the ruler to draw a quarter inch line. So I'm going to match up the edge of the ruler right along the edge of the paper. So the yellow quarter inch line is matched up right with the edge of the paper. And then I'm going to draw a quarter inch line on the paper itself. So now I have a measured quarter inch on the paper using my ruler. Okay, so now I'm going to place. So I'm going to place that paper so that it actually matches up right with my needle. So when I put my needle down, I'm going to put that needle exactly on the line that I just drew. So now my needle is on this line and I'm going to uh, use that line as the guide from where I stitch. Okay? Now in a perfect world, my machine actually has this little white line right here which is saying, hey, that's your quarter inch. And it even says that's three eighths, that's one half. But clearly at the setting that I'm using, which is about three and a half for both the width and the length, that quarter inch line is way off. It's a, a pretty significant amount off of where I want my quarter inch to be. So this is going to be a little more accurate than even what my sewing machine is telling me is the quarter inch. Okay, so I'm going to stitch along that line for just a little bit, which I've started the line, and then I'm going to continue stitching a little bit more so that the entire paper is kind of covering the whole throat of the sewing machine. Okay. 
going to lower my needle just to hold that paper in place. Now I'm going to leave that paper there while I tape. And this will help me give a more accurate quarter inch seam allowance to the entire length of the throat rather than just by the needle. And then that way I can also use my tape to guide my fabric through as I'm stitching. So I am using washi tape. Washi tape is so amazing. It is so useful. Um, it comes in all these really fun, cool patterns. Um, I just have two purples here, but washi tape can be found at any um, craft store. It is a low adhesive tape, which means that the adhesive that's used to stick it down is a low tack adhesive. So when you use it, um, it will easily pull up. You can easily reposition it. And I love using the washi tape on my sewing machine because it doesn't cause any gumminess on the sewing machine. So just take a length of washi tape, match that washi tape up with the edge of the paper. And I'm gonna lift my presser foot so I can get the tape underneath. So go ahead and put that tape edge to edge with the paper and then press that tape down onto the throat of the sewing machine. Just carefully press it down all the way down. When I sew my fabric, I'm going to make sure that my width and length settings are the same ones that I set before I started sewing my project. So, like I said, my width and length settings are about three and a half each. Um, I measured from the needle on the paper over to the quarter inch line using the piece of paper and placed that paper at a quarter inch out from the needle. And then finally I placed the washi tape. So what ends up happening is when I go to sew a piece of fabric, I can place that fabric on the edge of that washi tape as a guide. And then I can stitch, even using it down closer where I have my fabric hanging off the throat, I can stitch a quarter inch seam more accurately. And then when I actually measure this, when I measure this seam, it will be a more accurate quarter inch seam. Now, one of the secrets to quilting is consistency. So even if this seam isn't a perfect, elusive quarter inch seam, when you measure and place and tape in this way and then use the tape guide as your quarter inch guide throughout the life of the quilt, throughout the life of the project that you are sewing using the same settings, everything will be the same. In theory, everything will be the same quote unquote quarter inch seam allowance. And then everything that you stitch together should theoretically match up because you're using the exact same measurement stitch for every seam.